It was a cold and rainy night in Boston, March 18, 1990. The city was celebrating St. Patrick's Day and the streets were filled with revelers. But at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, a quiet and elegant mansion that housed a priceless collection of art, something sinister was about to happen. At 1.24 a.m., a car pulled up near the side entrance of the museum. Two men in police uniforms got out and pushed the buzzer. They told the guard on duty that they were responding to a disturbance call and asked to be let in. The guard, a young art student who was working the night shift, broke the protocol and opened the door. He thought he was doing the right thing, but he was making a fatal mistake. The two men were not cops, they were thieves, and they had come to rob the museum. As soon as they entered, they overpowered the guard and handcuffed him. They also found and subdued another guard who was patrolling the museum. They tied them both up in the basement and duct taped their mouths and eyes. They told them that this was a robbery and that they would not be harmed if they cooperated. The thieves then proceeded to loot the museum. They had 81 minutes to execute their plan and they knew exactly what they wanted. They went to the Dutch room where they cut out four paintings from their frames, the storm on the Sea of Galilee and a lady and gentleman in black by Rembrandt, the concert by Vermeer and landscape with an obelisk by Flink. They also took a small self-portrait etching by Rembrandt and a Chinese bronze beaker. These were some of the most valuable works in the museum and in the world. They then moved to the short gallery where they stole five sketches by Degas and a bronze eagle finial. They also took a painting by Manet, Chateau Tony from the Blue Room. They ignored other artworks that were more famous or expensive, such as a Botticelli, a Raphael and a Titian. They seemed to have a specific taste or a specific buyer. They packed their loot in bags and boxes and made two trips to their car. They left behind empty frames broken glass and a mystery, they departed at 2.45 a.m. and vanished into the night. The guards remained tied up until the police arrived at 8.15 a.m. They were shocked and traumatized, but unharmed. They told the police what had happened, and the investigation began. The FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the museum joined forces to find the culprits and recover the artworks. They offered a 10 million reward for information leading to their safe return, the largest bounty ever offered by a private institution. But the case proved to be extremely difficult. There was no physical evidence, no fingerprints, no DNA, no surveillance footage. The thieves had worn gloves, hats, and fake mustaches. They had used a stolen car, which was later found abandoned. They had disabled the museum's alarm system and avoided the motion detectors. They had left no clues, no traces, no witnesses. The investigators had to rely on interrogations, informants and sting operations. They followed many leads but none of them led to the artworks. They suspected that the robbery was planned by a criminal organization, possibly the Boston Mafia, which was in the midst of a gang war at the time. They questioned several suspects, but none of them confessed or cooperated. They all denied any knowledge or involvement, despite the offer of reward money and reduced prison sentences. One of the main suspects was Bobby Donati, a gangster who was close to the museum's security director. He was also a known art lover and collector. Some believed that he organized the heist to negotiate for the release of his boss, who was in prison. But Donati was killed in 1991, in a gang-related murder. His death was another dead end. Another suspect was David Turner, a member of a gang in Boston's Dorchester neighborhood. He was arrested in 1999 after a sting operation in which he tried to buy a stolen Rembrandt from an undercover agent. He claimed that he was looking for the Gardner paintings and that he knew where they were, but he refused to reveal their location unless he was granted immunity. The authorities did not agree to his terms and he was sentenced to 38 years in prison. He was released in 2019. After serving 20 years, he still maintains his innocence. The Gardner Museum heist remains unsolved and the artworks remain missing. They are estimated to be worth more than $500 million today and are considered to be among the most sought after stolen objects in the world. The museum still hopes for their return and keeps their frames empty as a reminder and a tribute. The FBI still pursues the case and welcomes any tips or leads. The reward is still available and the statute of limitations has expired. Anyone who has the paintings can come forward without fear of prosecution. But no one has come forward, no one has seen the paintings, no one knows where they are.
They could be hidden in a basement, a warehouse, a vault, or a wall. They could be damaged, destroyed, or altered. They could be anywhere or nowhere. They are the lost treasures of the Gardner Museum, and this is their story.